got a problem. Do you have a face mask for the phone? What a lava. British Airways, the UK's flag carrier and my most used airline. I've flown BA so many times I have silver elite status with them. This means I get perks such as lounge access, priority boarding and free seat selection. In the last five months alone I've flown long haul with BA in both business class and premium economy. And today, surprise surprise, I'm flying long haul again with British Airways only this time in economy class and unfortunately it doesn't get off to the best of starts but can BA turn it around well stay tuned and let's find out oh and we'll come back to travels with Bieber here we are in the south terminal at Gatwick Airport and today we are flying with British Airways in economy on an 11 hour flight. Oh yes, long haul baby. Um, we are going to the Dominican Republic, excitingly. We're going for a nice 11 night stay to escape the UK uh, and it's bad weather and enjoy some sunshine. However, there's a problem. We've got an issue but we noticed last night with British Airways and we're here at the check-in desk to see if we can fix it. So I'll tell you after that what's happened hello there we go yes we've got we're going to the Dominican Republic Punta Cana we've got a problem I'm hoping you can help thank you thank very you much very thank you much. That's checking sorted. Unfortunately, British Airways did fix our issue thankfully and I will explain it all in the lounge. Right, here we are at British Airways Club World Lounge here at Gatwick Airport's Terminal South. We're able to access this lounge because we're silver members with British Airways Executive Club. Really nice lounge this is, really large and what's amazing is it's quiet. Heathrow's um, lounge for British Airways is usually absolutely rammed at the moment so it's really nice and quiet here which is amazing and to top it off, check out those views. Full apron and runway views there. Loads of EasyJet and British Airways and Chewy planes there. So a beautiful lounge to spot from. Which brings me to explaining what the problem was. So in short, we'd initially booked good seats in economy, uh, window seat and middle seat in row 23. I called up the other day, called British Airways to ask how much it would cost to upgrade. They quoted me £6,000. Crazy. So obviously we said no. Unfortunately the woman had left the page open on business so selected the seats in business to see how much it would cost and never put us back in our economy seats. So yesterday when I went to check in I couldn't. No ticket number apparently. So I had to call up British Airways and say right we can't check in. They said what basically happened is the woman had left us in business. Ooh get excited. Is it in business? Are we staying in business? I'm afraid not no. Um, so yeah they didn't leave us in business uh, because they said right there's obviously an error here you um, are going to have to be moved back to economy because you haven't you know, paid for your business seats which we hadn't gone ahead with anyway but he didn't move us back to our original seats oh no he moved us right to the back of the plane in the middle row in the middle aisle and on top of that he moved us to a lower class of economy so we were getting less tier points and less avios less than we paid for so that's really bad, really weren't happy with that. Went to the check-in desk this morning, the Club World check-in desk again, we have access to that because we're silver members with BA. And they said, right, well, there's nothing in business anyway if you want to upgrade. But fortunately, there is a window and middle seat available in row 20 of economy, so that's the front of economy. And they've moved us to that, which is fantastic. Economy is full at the moment. There's only single seats here and there, so I'm glad they found two seats left for the first there. So thank you for that British Airways you rectified it you put us in good seats as we originally booked but really uh, poor that we were left in that situation where we were having to come here early to try and sort that issue out but hey ho so it's fixed sorted we can eat now and look forward to boarding the flight soon cheers gate 15 it is let's go do you have a yeah, face mask for the flight? Yeah, but no, we don't, no. Do no, you can't buy one from me, so yeah. Oh, where? Outside at the end of the corridor is a vending machine. 
I'll tell you to think about it because I think it all depends where you're flying to. Well, it's a pretty scary way to fly. What a palaver. Got to the gate, only to be told, have you got a mask? So we've had to run to a vending machine and spend £5 each, so £10 for two masks. It's ridiculous. I'm sure Dominican Republic masks are not required. Here masks are not required. Is it British Airways enforcing that for itself? I don't know. Maybe they're required by authorities in Dominican Republic. I don't know. Anyway, £5 mask purchased. Back to the gate. Yeah, great. No, thank, thank you. you. Hello. 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 Just say hello to this one, so you're going to take an immediate yeah, break to go on this one. Thank you so much. Right, here we are. Right, just boarded this 777-200 with British Airways that's going to take us on to the Dominican Republic. Um, so far, so good. Really impressed with the seat that we've been moved to. It's made up for the mistakes that were made earlier because, check this out, we are in the bulkhead row that's dividing us and premium economy. As a result, we have got brilliant legroom. Look at that. I mean, I'm 5 foot 10, so I can touch the uh, partition. That's not a problem for me. It's still a great amount of leg space. Um, we've also got the tray table is built into the armrest, which I will show you later, as is the invite entertainment screen, which will pop up in front of us here. Literally this close, so that will be fantastic. Um, so, yeah, uh, the seat itself is really comfortable thickly padded so that's good um, as a result of the uh, tray table being inside the armrest we can't move the armrest up or down so it's slightly narrower this seat but it's still not a problem as you can see it's still quite a good space so yeah so far really impressed with this seat and um, so yeah we're just waiting for everyone to board and then we will be off for our 11 hour journey to the Dominican Republic There's a very loud crying baby on this flight. They seem to follow us all the time. We had it in business to Argentina, we had it in premium, uh, back from Argentina, now to the Dominican. This might be a long flight. London Gatwick now and the baby has gone all quiet are we gonna be lucky is it gonna stay quiet I'll probably tempt to faint now and it'll cry in the middle of this clip but anyway uh, yeah we're airborne now and so I guess it's time to get to know the seat a bit more so um, my, my girlfriend's already jumped out to get to know the seat as you can see so let's see how it all works shall we I'll show you how to pop out the uh, in-flight entertainment system now if I just press that button right there that pops out like so and you swivel it around and there you have it the in-flight entertainment screen right in front of you there that's brilliant that is got a USB port there and the USB I think C port there for Samsung iPhone devices etc and then you've got uh, a port for plugging your headphones in well earphones actually that are provided by British Airways this was on my seat when we arrived and there you have it yeah they're not going to be the best of quality they're not going to be the best of sound so that's provided also what else is provided when we sat down is a cushion 
uh, pretty pretty light and flimsy not the best cushion but uh, it'll do and finally a blanket was provided as well on our seat when we arrived so maybe I'll make good use of that later it's a bit chilly mid-flight um, I think down here next to my seat we've got a remote control um, oh I think you just press it from here you can't take it out you just click there but you don't need that because it's right in front of you so that's fine and this is for the recline and um, I'll show you how the recline situation works later on in the flight and uh, also one more thing I forgot to show you is the tray table let's see how that works so if you just open this little pocket here in your armrest then flip out a ta your tray table like so that is your tray table and you can move it forward back that's good and it's not too flimsy a little bit flimsy at the corner but it's not that bad it's okay and it's quite a nice space um, and especially when you haven't got a seat in front of you it's even nicer you can actually have a laptop on here because you're not limited by the seat in front of you so that's fantastic so this flight is going to take around eight hours to get to Antigua and that's where we are stopping for about a one two hour layover before we then fly onwards to the Dominican Republic that's why it's an 11 hour flight in total I think we stay on the flight during our time in, in Antigua I hope so anyway I will give the in-flight entertainment system a go shortly which my girlfriend is showing doesn't work as well as I thought it did <laughs> okay not great <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll give that a go at some point but uh, yeah it's, it is a bit slow sometimes but we'll see what it's like later yeah so far settling into the flight nicely hopefully not long until we receive some form of a drink or snack service we'll see Just as I mentioned that the snack service should be coming along shortly, lo and behold, here it is. 25 minutes into the flight, we've got a, um, we're offered a drink and uh, some pretzels to snack. So yeah, um, gonna enjoy this and then settle in. challenge to see how long it takes for a flight attendant to come to me uh, because when I went to plug my headphones into the in-flight entertainment screen uh, to listen to a film the sound was coming out of only one side of the earphones that's provided by BA so I need to get another pair and hopefully that will work in both sides so let's see how long it takes them uh, I think the button is underneath here um, there it is I think that's done the job, yep, there you go. After around 12 minutes, would you believe it, 12 minutes of waiting, um, a member of the cabin crew finally came over to me and um, I mentioned that the earphones don't work and the woman kindly went and got some headphones from, um, I think, from uh, business class. Yeah, looks like noise cancelling headphones these from business class, which is fair enough, which is quite good, isn't it? But yeah, 12 minutes, that's way too long to be waiting for a member of the cabin crew to come to you. Again, I think it comes down to them not being fully crewed. They've got the minimum number of crew members on the fly, but I don't think they've got as many as they used to have before the pandemic, so that might explain why they are so slow, but hey ho. I mean, they're still very polite, they're still very kind, they still smile, but very slow, unfortunately meal service has just arrived um, around an hour into the flight so that's nice we got an option of I think a three bean chili or grilled chicken and mash which is what I've gone for you get bread roll crackers cheese rice and some all oh, lovely some black forest gato with it and a bottle of water uh, you don't get a GoPro battery with it though my bad let me remove that there you go that's your meal <laughs> So yeah, I'll open this, tuck in, and see how it is. Absolutely delicious, really 
soft and succulent chicken. The mash is nicely flavoured. The sauce is beautiful. The vegetables are soft. Yeah, really nice meal this is. Enjoying it. So I'm going to uh, enjoy the rest of it and then tuck into my pudding, sides, bottle of water to wash it down with. All good. When you have crackers and cheese, but you only have a flimsy wooden knife to cut the cheese with, there's only one way to eat it. Just finished our meal and thoroughly enjoyed that. It was really nice. Me and my girlfriend were just having a debate about this that we think that that meal was better than the meal we had in premium economy when we came back from Buenos Aires in Argentina to London the other month. So, better than premium economy, that's saying something. Really enjoyed that. And already uh, the cabin crew have been around to clear the tables and offer a hot drink. Obviously, I've opted for a cup of tea. Something will be amiss if I didn't go for a cup of tea. I absolutely love tea. So I'm just going to drink that, maybe watch a film, play around with the in-flight entertainment system, which I'm going to show you very shortly now, and then enjoy the rest of the flight, really, as we head towards Antigua. show you the toilet too much because I've just noticed the guy who was in here has left quite a mess. Let me just shut that toilet seat. Oh, right. There you go. That's a much prettier side. So yeah, there's the toilet. Quite a long space. Um, the air conditioning's on, so that's quite nice. Uh, lots of mirrors around. So yeah, different. Um, you've got your hand gel, tissue paper, and more tissue paper, and oh, you don't have a thing for folding down a table to change baby's nappies, which you usually do have by the looks of it. So you don't have that, uh, but you do have a coat hook there as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Very basic, I would say, this toilet, and very dated. You can see just how old it is. It's a really dated toilet, but it is an old plane. It's a 777-200. It's been around a while, so it's a bit battered and bruised. Um, so yeah, quite old-fashioned, but quite a nice large toilet. It'll do. But yeah, it'll do. That's the loo review. Time for me to go and do my business, and that's not for you. My rhymes, very good. So yeah, see you soon. drinks and uh, a round of drinks during our flight so that's good and we're enjoying watching the new Spider-Man film at the moment before I show you that IFB and I am going to show you that IFB which this is really, really good film. Just finished watching Spider-Man um, which will explain why my eyes might be slightly red yes I get soppy at the most silliest films, Disney films, you name it I'm always soppy and yeah it had me tearing up honestly. Anyway um, so now that's over with, I can show you the in-flight entertainment system. And this is how it looks. You have a really good responsive screen here, although it can be a bit on and off. But it looks good so far. Um, you can see a whole right wide range of entertainment. Which will come up now. Um, that's the Spider-Man we've just seen. Uh, and there's loads of films. There really are so many different varieties. So that is very good. Then you've got TV. Which brings up your box sets and your HBO stuff like that. That looks all good. And then you've got audio which is where you find the music and audio podcasts. Then you've got games. Games is really good on here actually. You've got quite a large selection. Uh, my favourite being the one that's last. 
who wants to be a millionaire not that I actually, actually ever win never got the intelligence for that unfortunately but that's that Skyfly is quite cool that's for kids so you've got movies for kids TV for kids music for kids and games for kids which my girlfriend is now looking at um, and then that's that we've got shop now this is where you can shop for your duty free if it works yeah got loads of options for duty free stuff here click on the three lines and you can get watches tobacco alcohol etc cool and last but not least the map there we have it so uh, it shows that we are all way above, uh, beyond the halfway point now and we have got three hours left as you can see so we're not too far now and we are going here first Antigua we then fly on to Dominican Republic. I think there's different modes as well on this map. You can see what it's like from the side, from above, the other side, and this is quite funny, a window view. <laughs> um, but as we're obviously over the Atlantic at the moment, there is nothing to see. So this is only exciting when you come, when you start flying over um, some of the islands on the way to the Dominican Republic. That's when it will be nice to look at the screen, but there's nothing to see now except out of this beautiful looking window. So yeah, one thing I should also mention, as I said earlier, I was given these um, noise cancelling BA headphones from Business Class because my earphones from British Airways weren't working. And they're really good actually. I usually stick to my Bose headphones to listen to music on my phone, but listening to movie, uh, movies and stuff, I use the provided headphones, and this is actually quite decent. It is noise cancelling, um, feels okay, it's, you know, it's not going to be amazing quality, but it feels okay, did the job, and it was quite nice listening to Spider Man 3D, so that's good. So, yeah, um, that brings us to the end of our entertainment system tour. Three hours left, not long to go now. I'm going to let you in on something that I'm surprised a lot of people don't really know when they're flying economy on British Airways. Um, now I don't know what it's like for other airlines, but on British Airways flights anyway, if you're an economy, you can get pretty much unlimited food and drinks on long haul flights. Um, now again, surprisingly a few people didn't know this, but yeah, so at the back of the plane there's a galley, and in that galley is where all the cabin crew tend to hang around, it's where all the drinks are, the snacks are. Now what would be helpful, and I think it would be good if British Airways could do this, is if they just went up and down the cabin every hour or two hours, just asking people if they'd like a drink or like a snack. That would be nice, uh, but unfortunately they don't do that, and I think that's a shame. I wish they would do that anyway. So bearing that in mind, you can actually go and ask yourself. It's unlimited basically then. I mean obviously if you start taking the, the pee and asking for 30, 40 drinks, it might get a bit too much, but you can at any time, as I'm going to show you now, go to the back of the plane, go to the galley, just ask for a drink and a snack, and they'll happily give it to you. And I'm going to show you how that works. Come along. Thank you very much. Thanks. Got any snacks as well or anything like that? Great, sorry, sorry. Um, oh, I'll put it in my pocket so I can carry it. Thank you so much. Do you still have those pretzels? I love those pretzels. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I do love those pretzels. <laughs> oh, or maybe not. <laughs> oh, lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you. So kind. Thank you. There you have it. That's how you get a drink and a snack for free at any time of you, that you want during an economy flight with British Airways Long Haul. Oh, dear me, your travel vlogger here has just achieved an amazing milestone on this trip of 7200 from uh, London to the Dominican Republic with British Airways. And guess what that milestone is? I slept. I couldn't sleep in business class to Argentina. I couldn't sleep in uh, premium economy back from Argentina, but I slept in economy. <laughs> How that works, I don't know. I've always struggled to sleep on plane. I've just literally had a two, three hour nap. I woke up feeling really surprised when I saw on the screen that there's only, what, an hour left? 
Wow! And my timing could not be even better. Not long having woken up, we've been uh, served our snacks. Um, nice little goodie bag of snacks here with a drink of our choice. I chose a cup of tea. Let's have a look at what we've got, shall we? So I went for a turkey and cheese sandwich. I've also got oh, and a nice little crunchy chocolate bar to go with my tea there. Um, knife and fork and just a bottle of water. There you go. That, I'll let my bag fall on the ground there, but that is my snack I've just been um, given. So the pilot has just announced that we are now 20 minutes from landing, the seatbelt signs have come on and yeah, in a short while we'll be landing in Antigua, our first glimpse of the Caribbean. Antigua looking beautiful out the window there so yes we've just landed we'll now wait here for around an hour while the passengers getting off here get off there's around 20 passengers getting off I think and then there will also be a new crew being welcomed on board whilst the old crew get off we will then go on to the Dominican Republic our final destination so yeah just got to wait around here for an hour and I think at some point during this one hour layover we'll be able to get up have a stretch and have a walk around during which I'll try and sneak in a tour of the plane if I can um, and show you what it looks like in premium Thank and in business. Now able to visit here, passengers are now getting off the plane so yeah it won't be too long hopefully until I can try and get a seat tour in of all the other cabins um, of all the other classes. Let's see. Right, while we're waiting here in Antigua, let's do a tour of the plane. Let's see what premium and business class looks like on this 777-200 that's taking us to the Dominican Republic. Right, so we are in economy class, as you can see. Let's show you what premium economy looks like. Um, here's the seat. You've got a much wider seat with a footrest there. You've got great leg room. You've got little panels there to place your drink. Your, um, tables in the armrest there. Quite a nice seat. If you want to see what it looked like in premium economy on my flight back from Argentina to the UK with British Airways on its 350, um, then check out the link that you can see on the screen now. Uh, that'll give you a good idea what it looks like. But yeah, this is what it looks like on the 777-200. Now let's go and have a look at business. Oh, it's too messy, isn't it's it? It's too messy. Oh, Let me sort it out I'll, I'll do it again. Oh. Right, take two. This is yet again British Airways uh, business class on the tri triple seven dash two hundred. Nice and clean now. It wasn't a minute ago, so she's just <laughs> nicely tidied up for me. So yeah, this is what it looks like. It's a two uh, four two configuration and you basically bring this footrest down and it converts into a fully flat bed the only downfall to this because it's the old um, version of business class here it's the original version um, if you want to go to the toilet and you're sat say in this row um, then the person sat there whose legs you can see now um, will have to climb over the person's lying flat here to go to the toilet that's the downfall. The same with that seat. If you're s sleeping there and you need to go to the toilet, you need to step over the person's legs here to go to the toilet. So um, that's the downfall. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, that's the downfall. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to show the shoes of the people distracting me. There we go. Yeah, very bad. 
<laughs> right, so uh, yeah, so that's what it looks like. Um, but that said, it still looks really decent. Um, it's a really good uh, wide seat, looks comfortable. This is where your um, in-flight entertainment screen will pop out and it'll come out here and you can see it in front of you um, and yeah it's a really comfortable seat by the looks of it it's just that it's the old version of it so climbing over people is not the best however if you're sat in this little window seat it's so private so private because you bring up the divider that's here I'll try and show you, no I can't show you, but there's the buttons, you can bring up the divider here and then you are in your own little suite, so that's really private which is fantastic, but if you're sat in the aisle, you're going to see everyone else, so it's not private whatsoever, so you want to be sitting in the window, eventually these 777s are going to be updated in line with all the other aircraft that's been updated to include the new club, club suite um, and they are fantastic if you want to see how that looks check out my review of that on our 16 hour flight from London to Argentina it's incredible that's what it will look like on this plane eventually but the Gatwick 777s are one of the last ones being updated with the new cabin so yeah bear that in mind but you still get a fantastic seat there is one other downfall I've just remembered, and that is storage. I know this only storage you have in the entire suite, I say suite, seat, is this, in this little cubby here. And that is it, there's no other storage space here. So bear that in mind too. That said, again, it's still a fantastic business class seat and I'm sure you would not be disappointed flying any distance in that. Anyway, that's that, I'm being distracted again by these shoes. Thank you very much. Welcome, bye. <laughs> Another thing I'm going to show you while we're waiting here in Antigua is uh, the seat recline, which is surprisingly good. I tried it out during the journey and I stayed in that recline position, but I did that sort of thing where I just reclined really slowly just so I didn't pee off the person behind me. <laughs> um, but uh, the person behind me is actually a kid, uh, so yeah, it's not that much of an issue. But yeah, so I'll show you now when the kid's not behind me uh, what it looks like when I go into a fully reclined position um, at speed rather than in inches. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like. So I press this bu uh, button, and this is what happens. <laughs> There is the recline situation. I don't know if you can make out how good it is. But it's not bad at all. It's really nice. Um, and especially when I can stretch my legs out like that, because we're at a bulkhead seat, it makes it even better. I've got a lot of good things to say about our flight today. I'll sum it all up when we land in the Dominican Republic. But for now, just a short wait, and then we'll be on to Punta Cana. exciting times here's the view out my window at the moment now at the start of the trip we were given these landing cards for the Dominican Republic so I'm going to take the time now to fill those in and then relax enjoy the trip oh and one thing I forgot to mention just a minute ago um, the cabin crew came out and offered a drink this tiny uh, carton of orange juice to give you an idea of how tiny it fits in the palm of my hand but um, yeah, a bit of orange juice, hey ho. Uh, but it is such a short hop over to the Dominican Republic, so I can't say I'm too surprised. So yeah, I'm going to fill my landing cards in, drink my small orange juice, and uh, look forward to landing in Punta Cana. Oh, by the way, at the end of the trip, I will sum up the entire flight when we arrive at the hotel in Punta Cana to tell you what I thought of this economy flight with British Airways, 11 hours long from London Gatwick to Punta Cana.
welcome to Punta Cana. We're finally here at our hotel, the Majestic Mirage Hotel. Um, yeah, it's huge, this place. We've had to actually literally go on a tour of the entire um, resort because it's so large. So, summing up that flight from Gatwick to Punta Cana with British Airways in economy class. Really happy with it. Um, seriously, uh, the food was really good. The hard product was really good. We were in a bulkhead seat, so we had lots of leg room. The seats were comfortable. Being able to bring out the in-flight entertainment screen from your armrest so it's directly in front of you was even more amazing. And all in all, it was actually really good. It exceeded my expectations. It honestly felt on par with my premium economy flight from Argentina to the UK with British Airways. And not too far off business. I mean, the only difference with business is the hard product is brilliant on business um, with the new club suites. But apart from that, the food was pretty similar. The service was the same, now that's going to bring me to something else that is. The service was the only negative for me. The crew was, were polite, they were still nice, still, you know, willing to have a chat when I spoke to them in the galley at the back, but they're still very slow. But I don't think that's down to the individuals themselves, I think it's just down to the fact that BA don't have enough crew members at the moment. I think they're just meeting the minimum requirement for crews on flights, and before the pandemic they used to completely ram those flights with cabin crews. So. I just think that because of the pandemic, they've not got a lot of their staff back, and as a result, that's why service is suffering and it's being slow. It's a shame. If BA could just improve on its service, it's going to be top marks for me, but unfortunately, it was slow. Everything else, though, was brilliant. Food, hard product, the uh, experience, 11 hours felt like, I don't know, half of that. So, you know, it's surely a good thing, and I slept. I actually slept on a plane, amazing. So yeah, really enjoyed it, exceeded my expectations. What did you think? You might not agree, you might think, mm, not sure that was a good flight, Nick, or you might tell me, oh, I've just been on a flight of British Airways and it was awful, or it was absolutely fantastic. If you've got any opinions on that, please do comment below. I'd love to hear what you've got to say. And also, if you enjoyed this video, please do like, and please do subscribe if you haven't already. It means a massive deal to me, and I promise you I've got some extremely exciting trips coming your way. So when you click the subscribe button, make sure you click the notification bell next to it, so that you'll be notified of all of my future videos. And like I said, some brilliant trips coming up for you. So look, that brings me to the end of this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. Time for me to relax, soak up the sun, and enjoy 11 nights of relaxation. Can't wait. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.